Greetings and salutations, this is Vespasian and my trusty sidekick. Hello. Today we're going to be bringing you another Q&A. Uh, we keep getting lots of questions and stuff and we you just didn't... Ask them. Yeah, we didn't get time to get around to doing a Q&A, but we thought as we're doing the bolt action game today, we'll do a bolt action Q&A while we've got the bolt set up. So, over to you with the questions. Right. I can't read the name. <sighs> what name? That one. Grand Prigro, possibly. Appears to be a weird sort of animal in the picture. I don't know. Why do people have such difficult YouTube names? I can't pronounce half the YouTube names. <laughs> it's a guy. Hi. You you could have cut the cut the infantry infantry figure in half and used him as the commander. Right. Um, yes. Uh, this uh, question is for this vehicle here. If you go through my videos, you will find one I've done about this. Uh, it's a German SDKFZ two 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 which is a early war German armoured car, in fact I think we used until the end of the war, uh, standard armoured car with a 20mm cannon. And I've basically, I had a spare Chinese figure left, so I put the guy pointing into the distance, trying to tell the crew of the armoured car where the enemy were, possibly, or where the local coffee shop was. I mean, the Germans basically, in the early 1940s, decided to go on a grand tour of Europe, you know, just to see the sites and stuff, you know, get pictures taken, or selfies taken next to the Eiffel Tower, that sort of thing. And they sold some of these armoured cars to China, and they were the main armoured cars used by China in the other part of the war, so I made this model, and uh, the guy stood next to it. Um, yeah, I could have had him standing out of the cop lab, but the figure, it was already built, so I uh, basically just stuck the figure on. So, it, it didn't take too much thinking to do. But, nice idea. Go on. He also said, did you scratch, scratch build it? Yes. Yeah, it's entirely scratch built out of Milliput. Which you can get anywhere, really. It's the same as green stuff, but sets better. Next. Um, Cullion1189. We can pronounce that name, thank you. Um, loving these vids, always loving seeing other people's armies and seeing how how they go about building them, especially the less common forces. Yeah, um, for some reason I always have done the least common army. Um, I was one of the few people who had a squat army for 40k when they abandoned playing squats. I also had a Dark Eldar army. It seems like whatever I pick, um, no one seems to want to play them anymore. Uh, but yeah, uh, these guys are Chinese, they're awesome, um, and it's something that people don't do. So um, I'm doing Chinese World War Two for bolt action, and it's not Northwest Europe, because everyone else does Northwest Europe, and uh, it's boring. Next. Um, it's from Brigamer, on your bolt action war to uh, Chinese nationalist commander. Yeah. Um, you, you, could, you could use Americans to fight Japan. Yes, um, I've answered this already to you um, online. Uh, yeah, I could use Americans to fight Japan, um, but I didn't want to use Americans at the time. Um, problem is with Americans, other than uh, Manila, uh, most of the bat or all of the battles are fought in jungles or on beaches, basically. Um, and I didn't want to get tied down to the same battle repeatedly again and again. Um, I wanted to do some city fighting, but have it a bit different from what everyone else does. So I decided on Chinese and Chinese nationalists um, can be made by just getting normal German, um, uh, the normal German Blitzkrieg box and just painting them up as Chinese. Um, dark green uniforms, slight grey helmets and, you, and, and putties. Um, you've got yourself Chinese, uh, because the Chinese were equipped by the Germans um, right up to 1937. So the Chinese had a lot of German equipment and and it, it just kind of made sense. So it was an easy army to convert. So I did Chinese. Uh, also, China was a far bigger part of the Second World War than the American part of the Second World War. Um, most of the Chinese, I mean, uh, Japanese army was deployed against the Chinese. Um, and a, another larger portion uh, against the British and Allied forces in Malaya and India. Um, the troops fighting the Americans were 
really very small units, uh, a very small proportion of the Jap Chinese army, Japanese army was deployed against the Americans. So most of the actual battles of the war from 1937 to 45 was fought in China. So most of the war was fought in China as far as Japan was concerned. And the American side of the war was not really relevant to most of the Chinese high command, uh, Japanese high command, sorry. Um, they just wanted to keep the Americans at bay while they dealt with China. Um, that was Japanese thinking. The Japanese um, culturally looked to the East rather than looking to, to America. So um, they were just more concerned about what was going on in China than what was going on um, on the American front, which is why the, they didn't really follow Pearl Harbor up too strongly because they had trouble in China. So um, not long after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese forces expanded throughout the Pacific and then stopped dead. Not because the Americans stopped them particularly, but because Chenga happened, which was the... what? Just thinking of uh, Pearl Harbor. And when the Japanese failed, most of the attacks... Yeah, absolute disaster for the Japanese Air Force, uh, Japanese Navy. Uh, yeah, Pearl Harbor was a tough disaster for Japan. Um, they failed to do most of their objectives. It was, it was, it was a complete mess up, mainly due to weather and uh, flags that were the system yeah. used to communicate. They, they bombed the wrong targets because they were... I sent planes in the wrong time. Yeah, they sent the planes in the wrong time. Um, and they didn't follow up with the third wave, no. um, which, which, which would have Fish finished Pearl off. Uh, because it would have taken out the fuel, and without fuel, there would have been no American fleet. So, because the ships would have just not have been able to sail anywhere. Right. Um, no, no, yeah. No, I passed this question. Say again. I never finished that thing, but I can't remember what I was saying now. Uh, you could use Americans to fight Japan. Yeah, but I can't remember what I was actually saying. Chenga. Chenga, yeah. Uh, Chenga in China was, was the China, the Japan's Stalingrad. Uh, it was a total meat grinder. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of basically the, 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 the Chinese sucked the Japanese forces into Chenga and then they surrounded the Japanese army and destroyed it. So uh, just the same as Stalingrad. Uh, and it was a bigger scale than Stalingrad as well. It was a complete disaster for Japan and Japan was on the back foot then from then on. And so the need to expand in the Pacific was not, it was just not important. It just, just didn't, didn't really great on the Japanese radar. The Japanese Navy was all in for it, but the army was the biggest voter and the army was more concerned with China. So hence, um, do China and do China in the Second World War because it's a far bigger part of the war than the American front. Not that I'm downplaying what the Americans did, or the British for that matter. We did considerable amount of fighting in the Pacific. Uh, the Dutch did some fighting, some, yeah, some fighting when they weren't changing sides and yeah, so, uh, but, so the, the Pacific War is really, really big, and it wasn't all about the Americans. Uh, it was mostly about the Chinese. Next. Um, it's so, same guy, same question. Yeah. Um, how come you go through the trouble of making Chinese soldiers? I think I just answered that more or less. Um, yeah, the, the reason we do Chinese is, is, is because, uh, well... I suppose you mean by going to the trouble, it means, well, you can already, already buy Americans, so why not just buy them? Um, well, no, what it means is, are, but, you, are you a fan of the Chinese at this time? Are you a fan of the Chinese? Um, ah! Oh, at, the, at that specific time. Right, um, I'm a fan of nationalist China under Chiang Kai-shek. Ah, uh, no! No, I don't think anyone would be, to be honest, unless they were insane. <laughs> um, I'm not a huge fan of the communist forces either, um, but at least they were slightly fluffier than Chiang Kai-shek's lot. Um, he was a horrible, nasty dictator. Um, um, hey, who isn't? I mean, this is a Second World War we're talking about. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the Nationalist Chinese Army was a an army of troops who fought to defend China. They, the, 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 the army itself wasn't interested in the politics. Uh, Chiang Kai-shek had some really fruitful ideas and the communists themselves weren't really sure what they were doing at this point. But the actual troops who defended Shanghai, the troops who defended Nanking, um, they, they were just 
and, and the troops at Chenga, that, that they were willing to die for their country, to defend their country, not for an ideal, not for a religion and not for a cult of personality or any of the other things. They, they were fighting to defend their homeland, and the, 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 which is why the, the communists and the nationalists stopped fighting each other, because the armies of both um, realised they were fighting the same enemy, the Japanese. You know, let's beat the Japanese, then have a civil war and decide who's win. Um, so, so they really did fight, and when the leaders ran away uh, from places like Nanking, which they did repeatedly, the, the commanders of the army would just flee, or the, or the government would just run away. The soldiers would volunteer to stay behind and fight the Japanese. So, whereas in some, or most of the battles of the Second World War, you have organised armies defending cities and defending countryside and, and stuff. It was actually the Chinese soldiers themselves at a lower level um, deciding just to hold this ridge, just to hold this town, just, just to fight and try and stop the Japanese. And in many ways it was the same for the Japanese in reverse. Um, so, yeah, it, it was... It, 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 I don't know, there was slightly more honour to the war, in a way. Um, so I respect the Chinese soldiers who fought. They, they had very little support. They had practically no coverage from the West. The West basically ignored China. Uh, most people don't even know the war was fought in China. Even though it was mostly fought in China. Um, the millions of Chinese who died in the Second World War. That just no one is aware of. And and those guys died in vain. And not, not in vain. They, they died unknown. All those Chinese soldiers died with, without a memorial outside China. And really, uh, people should know more about it. And people should know more about their own history. People should know more about history at large. It's very difficult because so many schools only teach local history. Oh, stuff that's not got nothing to do with that. Uh, schools, for some reason, in, in Britain teach about slavery, which is irrelevant to Britain. Uh, we banned slavery years ago and and that that should have been the end of the discussion but now apparently we're supposed to apologize for it which is insane it's, no right next last question of our day yeah um awesome you guys know a lot about history that's from Brigham same guy that's the last question that we have yeah, I have led a unfruitful and productive life just learning about history. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I love history. I think history is great. Uh, my father, I was lucky, my father was into history. Well, he wasn't a historian, but he was into history. And he got me into it uh, mainly through the Napoleonic period. And he had a big interest in the Second World War as well. And I sort of expanded from there. Um, I was so disgusted that most of my teachers at school had very little interest in history, including most of the history teachers. Um, yeah, and, and, and I just enjoyed learning about history when I was younger, and as I got older I learned even more. And the internet is brilliant for it. Um, there's a lot of data on the internet if you want to go data mining on the net to find out stuff, and there's other places you can go too. There's these things called libraries, with, they have like paper in them and stuff. Uh, they like books made out of paper. Have you heard of them? No, no. no you've never, I've never, heard of Wikipedia. Yeah, that, that, that Wikipedia, history on the Wikipedia is like what happens when you walk into a hall and shout to everyone, what do you think of this? That's what Wikipedia is as far as history goes. But hey, it's handy as a quick reference sheet, I suppose. So yeah, we, we enjoy history. And you enjoy history too, don't you? Yes. Yeah. My eldest can't stand history. He thinks it's irrelevant and then keeps complaining about stuff and I explain to him that it's because of history. Um, but you, you're actually interested in history, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favourite period? Uh, uh, Romania. Romans. Typical. Romans. What Romans ever done for us? <laughs> you know you're going to let that go. No, I'm never going to let that go. Um, for those of you who haven't watched the videos, um, my son's teacher, um, we were to parents' evening, and I just asked because I'm like that. Uh, they, they were doing Victoria, women in Victorian times, the history of... No, we were was doing um, slavery. Yeah, women in Victorian times. And you, you were doing this... this well, that's what it was about. Uh, banning slavery was the, the female um, movement, which was helped ban slavery. And the, the, John, uh, was it Knox who, who, who brought the slavery bill? Uh, 
wasn't to Parliament. It was oh, the, the women. The women of the suffragettes who actually helped him. That's why there's a woman behind him in the statue. There's a statue of the guy who banned slavery, and the woman's behind him. That she's actually the one who helped. Oh God. Anyway. So didn't teach me that. Yeah, because they're not teaching you history. They're just teaching you propaganda. So, um, I've gone all off track again. Sorry. Um, yeah. What did you say again? Excuse. Oh yes, yes. Um, they were teaching him um, um, history. No, oh, no. Oh. They were teaching him some of the history uh, about um, how Britain banned slavery and, and for some reason. And um, I just, yeah. I just said, yeah. I just said, um, why don't you teach about Rome? You know, the creation of Western civilization. And the teacher said, what have the Romans ever done for us? Now, that would be great if I mean, she this, was this aware. Is, this is where um, some fumes are coming yeah, out of yeah, the ears. Fumes. <laughs> um, this is a bit funny if she'd have ever, heard, ever heard of Monty Python. Because <laughs> then it would be funny. Like, what have they ever done for us? <laughs> Apart from the roads, the schools, <laughs> all that stuff. Latin language and... Uh, um, apart from all that, law and order, and um, science, um, yeah, apart from all that, yeah, they've done nothing for us. Um, the reason we're here is because Rome existed. Uh, that's the reason Western civilization exists. It comes from Rome. That's where it comes from. We are Roman. Um, and for a history teacher not to know this and be completely unaware of it is a damning indictment on the education system of this country. So. With that really depressing statement, um, I'm going to end this Q&A in slight depression. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Vespasian. Please leave any comments you particularly like. And I did this. I'm just going to sit here and be quiet. I'm stealing my spotlight here. No, it's just like... Sorry, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And comment down below. Anything you'd like to know anything else about bolt action and answer them in the comments. <laughs> Help! You finished? Yeah. yeah, just leave any comments you want to the sidebar and uh, the low bar. Um, I, there's no links to leave. So, other than that, um, thank you very much for watching. This has been Vespasian, and goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. See ya.